ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, weighing 111 and a half pounds. He comes from Seoul, Korea, regarded as the Tiger of oh. Korean Flyweight, of seven Filipino fighters, and now the number one challenger to be Flyweight Crown, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Wunbarg. The red corner tipping the scales at exactly 112 pounds, wearing immaculate white trunks, except for the Philippine emblem. He's on the left side of his pants, standing five feet four inches, and carrying the eluded table of fighters. He hears from four months ago, where he faced one of the bloodiest and certainly one of the most dramatic victories in a championship contest ever witnessed by a Filipino audience. His father hails from the Holocaust. His mother comes from Samar. His last name is Bohol. Here is Rolando Bohol. and made the better man win. Down. A left 
great by the wall sends the Korean to the canvas for the first time tonight. He looks dizzy. He's trying to shake the corpus away from his head. And the bell saves him from further punishment. We'll be back with round two. Indeed, a surprising development in round one. Uh, we certainly did not expect the Korean to hit the canvas that early in the fight. After all, he had beaten seven Filipinos before this assignment against Rolando Bohol. And all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the threshold of round two. We're scheduled for 15, but it is highly doubtful that it will go the distance. You can bet that Rolando Bohol will go for the finishing kick in round two. Rolando came off his stool. Rushing towards his opponent. Well, during that one minute break between rounds, the Korean handlers worked practically to revive their gladiator. He absorbed a left straight to floor him towards the close of round one. It's very fortunately for him, there were only a few seconds left after the mandatory eight count given him by Mr. Hideo Harai of Japan, who is acting as our referee. Looks like he has recovered his wrist. But Bohol continues to stalk him around the ring. There's another volley by Bohol. Rounding the Korean against the neutral corner. A series of left by Bohol, followed by right hooks. The Korean diving into a crouch, hardly throwing any leather, going into a peek-a-boo stand, connecting now with a left hook. He's coming back. He's returning the compliment. Looks like it's not going to be a very easy fight for Bohol after all. The Korean still has a lot of fight and starch left in him. A good right draws by Park. Bohol backing up somewhat. He connects with another right hook. Bohol starting in the pace somewhat. But he's loading up for another big attack as the Korean bounces to and fro against the ropes. Another fierce barrage by Bohol forces the Korean to clinch and dive once again into a peek crouch. He's trying to dig that left hand into the pet basket of Bohol. Another savage series of lefts by Bohol followed by equally vicious right hook. They're back at the center of the ring. There's the head of the Korean jerk back again by a staggering left from the hall, followed up by still another left. That wicked left straight of Rolando Bohol is keeping the Korean climbing up a dozen walls. The Korean trying an overhand right to fend up the attack of Bohol. Well, one thing you can say for Cho Won Park, he's got a very fierce fighting heart. Well, actually, these two fighters have two common denominators. And these are Dadoy Anduhar and Ademar Ahmad, both Filipino fighters, who at one time crossed mitts with Cho Won Park and Rolando Pohol. Well, Rolando Pohol lost to Dadoy Anduhar via a controversial decision. But Anduhar was TKO'd by Joe Wan Park. And I guess we are in for another round. Round three, coming up. Yeah. Oh, between champion Rolando Bohol of the Philippines and Joe Won Park of Korea, the number one contender. Back in the first round, Rolando Bohol scored a very stunning knockdown of Joe Won Park. And were it not for the bell, it would have been curtains for the Korean. He was sufficiently revived during the one-minute break between rounds, and he came back somewhat strongly in round two, although Bohol, I must say, totally dominated round two also, being clearly the aggressor. 
missing with a probing right uppercut and now he throws the left straight without benefit of a lead as he continues to back the Korean against the neutral corner. The Korean would do well to stay away from that neutral corner where he becomes a very easy target for Bohol's combinations. He did a lot better when he was fighting the middle of the ring. It looks like he hurt us but he doesn't have very much footwork to speak of. He's standing flat-footed much of the time. Bohol on the other hand is a very flashy fighter. He can call on very deft footwork when the situation requires it. And undoubtedly, Rolando Bohol has a bigger arsenal and repertoire of blows. The Korean has been limited to simply left jabs and right crosses. Well, from time to time, he also has tried uh, some right uppercuts, uh, but those uppercuts uh, went for naught. Uh, right now, he's trying to poke that uh, left jab into the face of Bohol to keep the champion off balance. Bohol resting somewhat uh, and now connecting again with a left straight to the face. That left has entered the very puny defense put up by the Korean with impunity. Right uppercut tried by Bohol, fed it off now by a right cross of the Korean. Oh, the Korean is now fighting it out toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That could be very disastrous for him. That could be very hazardous to his health. And his head just got jerked back by another right from Bohol. The Korean does not seem to be very comfortable fighting a southpaw like Bohol. Well, he's not dealing with Bohol in the way uh, right-handers normally cope with southpaws. Okay, there is a right-hand lead thrown without the uh, benefit of a left jab. The phase of the fight has slackened up somewhat as Rolando probably realizes that it's not going to be that easy to put away the Korean, so he's conserving some fuel in case this fight goes the distance. In the meantime, he's playing it very smartly. Punching left jabs by the Korean. Uh, Cannot prevent Bohol from getting his own right jabs across. Oh, there is a wild combination by the Korean. The Korean, if I'm not mistaken, has a reputation for starting out very slowly and sluggishly. But once he finds his rhythm, it could be very, very uncomfortable for the opposition. And that's the end of the round three. And we'll be back with round four very shortly. <laughs> the Korean as he slouches in his corner awaiting the signal for round four there it is the Korean bravely answering the bell for round four we're scheduled for 15 a quick recap here Rolando Bohol scored a knockdown towards the close of round one to score the most startling development so far in this contest while the Filipino champion has so far dominated the contest in rounds two and three and it looks like he will continue his aggressive race through round four as the Korean simply keeps his hands very close to his face in an unmistakable such stance of defense. Well, one thing about a knockdown suffered very early in the fight, it could knock the psychological starch out of you. It could render you very timid. And one thing certain, Bohol has terrorized him with that left hand his most devastating weapon a left straight which he had honed up uh, precisely for this fight with so many hours of uh, hitting on the heavy bag of the alert support complex a good connection by the korean enraged the hall who came back strongly with a combination of his own right and left Korean really seems confused by the softball stands of Rolando Bohol. He just can't seem to load up. For one thing, he should be trying that right hand lead more often. Bohol, in the meantime, continues to poke that right hand jab of his to his left cheek with impunity, like he had a season pass to the face of the Korean. At this point, uh, the Korean face is clearly marked with a lot of bruises. While Koreans are very light complexion, and that's why their skins get easily marked. But at this point, it looks like the Korean is really none the worse for wear as a result of that knockout down he suffered in the first round. But then the psychological effect it had on him might be very disastrous. Right now, he is extremely defense conscious. 
He is playing up that right hand for fear that if he unloaded it, he might uh, draw an instant rejoinder from Pohol, which is exactly what is happening right now. Pohol, again, dominating the contest. Finally, the Korean with a left of the face, following it up with a vicious series of right hooks. Another clear connection to the face by Pohol. That left straight is proving to be the Korean's biggest undoing. He has not developed an antidote for that. The Korean continues to come back with crisp combinations of his own. Now trying tentative left uppercuts to the bread basket. Well, if he thinks he can wear down Bo Hall with shots to the body, he's badly mistaken. Bo Hall has one of the sturdiest of summons among Filipino fighters. And the Korean lives to see another round. Round five coming up in just 60 seconds.
have been on hand here at the Aranetta Coliseum to witness the IBF World Highway Championship bout between Rolando Bohol of the Philippines and Cho Wook Park of Korea. One third of the fight is done. We move to the last two thirds. This is round six. One knockdown scored by Rolando Bohol in the first chapter. But the Korean has showed as a very stout fighting heart and he has managed to weather the storm kicked up by Bohol in the subsequent rounds. Although I still have Bohol ahead by a virtual shutout, the Korean cannot possibly be discounted because he did display in the previous round that he has a mean right straight. The only problem is he is very scarcely in a position to throw that right hand. Most of the time he seems to be in an off balance position. That's a Pierce exchange. Red basket by Rolando. As the Korean once again dies for cover and unleashes a very crisp combination. The Korean has terrific hand speed, but there is an overhand left on court by Pohol. Well, offhand, I'd say that Pohol is connected with 70% of the punches he has thrown in the direction of the Korean. But also to the eternal credit of the Korean, he has absorbed practically all of them and still managed to stay in a vertical position except for that instance towards the close of round one where he suffered a knockdown. Now under normal scoring conditions, that round where Bohol scored a knockdown would have been counted as a 10-8 round in favor of Bohol. Good left uppercut to the body by Bohol. Hardly a reply from the Korean as Bohol continues to swarm all over him. I have the Korean listed here, but 5 feet 5, which should give him a 1 inch edge in height over Bohol, but he doesn't look like he's trying to... Ooh! That was a good right and left combination for the Korean. The Korean is finally learning to cope with a softball stance of Bohol. He just managed to connect with a right hand lead followed by a left hook. That's the accepted passion of coping with a softball, but he doesn't have the footwork to go with it. He should be circling the right flank of Bohol to avoid what is normally the devastating punch of a left-hander, and that is the left mitt. The Korean is also showing supreme economy of motion here, but he seems to be arm weary at this point. You probably notice how he tried to shake off the aches from his biceps by lowering his guard for a split second there. Okay, the lack of action has forced referee Hideo Arai to exhort the two fighters to give the ring fighters their money's worth. Right hook followed by a left. That's been the familiar combination, and it has been a devastating combination for Rolando Bohol. From time to time, he goes downstairs with that right hook to the kidney, and we'll have round seven in just seven. characters etched clearly at the belt line and the Korean flag uh, located at the bottom left hand side of his shorts. Rolando Bohol purposely trained uh, for power for this particular assignment uh, to try and wipe out uh, all doubts uh, about his hitting power. with his very erect stance makes him a sitting duck for just about everything that Bohol throws in his direction. Now he's showing some semblance of footwork trying to follow the movement, the circling movement of Rolando Bohol. Bohol is shooting a lot of confidence. 
and he's clearly carrying the fight to the Korean. On the left of the body. Ooh. A head collision. And the Korean is grimacing in pain. The Korean is grimacing in pain. It looks like he incurred a vicious cut as a result of that head collision. Of Avenger Cruz, the ring physician is being summoned to take a look at the cash. It looks very bad. I got a look at it as uh, Reverend Hideo Ara was examining it, and it's located right between the eyebrow and the eyelid. Well, Dr. Cruz has given the Korean the green light to go ahead, although that might mean a one point deduction for Rolando Poho. That's resulting from accidental headbutts normally result uh, in a one-point penalty for the guy who did not suffer the cut. Well, that cut has just given Rolando Bohol another target to zero in on. Right now it's not bleeding, but I imagine if it gets enough leather thrown into it, uh, it'll start oozing blood. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, going for the kill at this point. He has stepped out of gas and is once again blocking the Korean against the ropes. So Hull is following the same methodical strategy of going for a kill that was taught him personally by the great Lurdi. Well, as everybody knows, Rolando Bohol was one of the last protégés of the Flash. a thinking fighter. Although he knows he has the advantage, he does not go about his business in a reckless fashion. He is what you may call him drops and circles as a methodical killer. He is chopping the Korean down bit by bit. I don't really see any blood on that cut. It may not be a cut after all. Although I did see a boot the whole scheduled for 15. The previous round was clearly a big one for Rolando Pohol, and I still have him ahead by a clean sweep of the first seven rounds. The first round in particular would be something like a two-point disparity in the scores of the judges. That would be 10-8, based on the 10 points of my system of scoring. I made to understand that the three knockdown rule has been waived for this fight, so... Rolando Bohol taking up the pace and increasing the tempo of his attack. The Korean has frozen virtually like a statue. He's hardly throwing any leather. He's just standing there flat-footed with his very erect stance, which has proven to be his biggest undoing. straight by Bohol found its way clear to the nose of the Korean on a boarded right by the Korean. Well, clearly, Rolando Bohol is having a much easier time with this particular opponent than he did when he spoke with Chang Ho Choi back in January. Well, one thing definitely going for Bohol is the fact that this Korean stands just as tall as he does, or maybe even a shade shorter. The Korean seems to be a far cry from the molar who dealt the Filipino fighter Joseph Kalakaran a very vicious beating late last year in Korea. The crowd 
Bradley taking on the hole for the kill. be wondering what does it take to put away this gallant Korean. There goes another crunching right hook. Flush on target. But the Korean is still standing erect and is now even moving forward. But he's not throwing very much leather. He's simply loading up with that right hand. But he's not being given very much of an opportunity to unleash that right hand because Goal continues to smother him with every kind of combination in the book and then some. A sneaky right uppercut by Bohol sets up another walloping right and left combination. And now we can see blood oozing out of the right eyebrow of the Korean. Whether that's the same cut earlier inflicted by the headbutt or not uh, is something I do not tell. We'll have to verify that during this one minute. <laughs> of Chung Ho Choi, another Korean, last January 16th. The Korean on top of the ring with him tonight is already bloody and bruised. And I am certain now that it was not the same cut inflicted by the accidental head but about two rounds ago because that one was on the left eye. The cut that is really oozing blood right now is on the right eye. And it's located right between the eyelid and the eyebrow, towards the tip of the eyebrow. So it's not really that dangerous a cut as of now. But Bohol definitely knows that he can zero in on that target. And he's probably hoping right now to be able to aggravate that cut to a point where the ring position might be forced to stop the fight. In which case it will come down as a technical knockout victory for the Filipino champion. You know, even before that cut was inflicted by Bohol in the previous round, the Korean had already been very stingy with his right hand. But now that he has that cut to protect, I think that is going to tie up his right hand for good. And Bohol is having a field day. This is virtual target practice for the Filipino champion. He has maintained that 70% scoring clip we mentioned earlier. And he definitely has thrown the bigger volume of punches in this contest. If this fight goes the distance, it probably would be a virtual shutout for the Filipino champion. But then Bohol, knowing his flair for showmanship, as well as his big uh, fighting heart, will surely not settle for just a unanimous decision. He is unquestionably going for a knockout. The Korean is now also bleeding from the nostrils as he continues to absorb just about every punch that Bohol can throw. In fact, I am even under the impression that the Korean is eating up those punches faster than Bohol can throw them. Bohol's face is still unmarked up to this point. Incidentally, in case you've just joined us, we'd like to announce that Rolando Navarrete scored a big quantum leap in the direction of a comeback by scoring a second round knockout over number nine Philippine lightweight Elmer Leonardo in the companion main event to this world championship fight. Navarrete did away with Leonardo who was given the full count of ten by the referee in just one minute of the second round in that bout which was scheduled to go ten rounds. that did it then was a terrific left. The same kind of a punch. But Rolando Bohol is dishing out at uh, this Korean. He's still gamely taking everything in stride. Ooh. How much more of this can he take? We'll find out just as soon as round 10 gets off the ground. Ladies and gentlemen. 
and gentlemen, we're at the two-thirds milestone of the fight, which means this is round 10. We're scheduled for 15. And at this point, we'd like to thank our very fine sponsors for this fight coverage, including Collector's Item by Andy Player. Collector's Item is a masterpiece of whiskey perfection, which compares favorably with the most expensive premium scotch brands in the world. In fact, Collector's Item is already scheduled for export to the United States this coming June, and eventually to Europe and the rest of the globe. Well, the winner of this bout gets an elegant Italian design bottle of Collector's Item from yours truly. I don't know if you're keeping an official scorecard, an unofficial scorecard of your own, but on mine, I still have the whole ahead by a mile. The Korean has not won a single round in my own slate. I just heard a very nice remark from one of the ringsiders here, prodding Boho to avenge all the seven Filipino fighters who had earlier lost to this Korean. Maybe that's what Boho also has in mind. But I'm wondering what's really keeping the Korean up in the vertical position, notwithstanding the probably one of the most vicious rounds of punishment I've seen a flyweight take in all the years that they've been covering uh, boxing. Well, right now, Bohol is simply toying with him. Well, both fighters have worked up a pretty good threat. I can see a splotch of blood on the right side of the Korean. That came from either his nose, which is bleeding profusely, or that right eyebrow cut, which was opened up about two rounds ago by Bohol. More licks to the body being handed out by Bohol very generously. That right hand jab plus the right hook thrown with a lot of authority by Bohol has kept him on top of the Korean all this time. So far, it's been a very lopsided contest. And the Korean is complaining about alleged low blows. I don't really see the low blows. Anything you say, Park? Oh, the Korean got in a good right hand connection of his own to the nose of Bohol. One of his very few isolated moments of brilliance in this contest. Well, Rolando Bohol clearly has the advantage in wingspan, although I have them listed at 27 inches apiece. There might be an inaccuracy in those figures handed to me, because I think Bohol definitely has the edge in reach. And that reach is serving him in good stead right now. We will return with round 11 in 60 seconds. That means one third of the fight is still to unfold before your eyes. If it goes the distance, we're scheduled for 15. Oh, the Korean seems to have picked this round to really come out smoking. Well, he initiated hostilities, but he's back to his layback posture again. As Bohol continues to stay on top of him with a very active right hand jab and very smart footwork. Bohol has really prepared very cerebrally for this fight, although the Korean just ran out of the right. But Bohol comes back to Korea, returning the compliment with a strong left straight of his own. Bohol is not giving the Korean a single inch. He's not allowing him to pile up any points whatsoever. Round, you probably caught the Korean uh, time and again complaining about alleged low blows. Now, that may be so, but then one reason I can surmise for those low blows is because he keeps his belt line so far up his navel that it allows his opponent very little room within which to hit his torso. Another good isolated left to the face by Bohol. And the Korean all of a sudden decides to change his posture. Now he has adopted a Rocky Marciano approach. He has lowered his guard somewhat. That could be very disastrous for him, but it gives you an idea that he may be preparing for a suicidal attack. 
Well, at this point, he really has nothing more to lose if he comes up with a suicidal attack. Because he is so far behind on points that it will take nothing less than a knockout for him to be able to wrest the crown from the head of Pujol. The Filipino champion has really played his cards very smartly in this, his first defense of the title. Good right hand jab to the face by Pujol. See, Pujol is throwing those punches in staccato fashion. The Korean, although he keeps... Normally, anyway, he keeps his hands very close to his face, although he has dropped his guard right now. Really does not have very much defense to speak of. He does not have any footwork. His torso is very erect. His head is not that flexible. He's not able to bob and weave. He's not able to duck. And that's why he's been virtually a sitting duck. And the target practice for Buhol continues, unabated at this point. Now, the Korean is not a patsy, as you may think. After all, a victory over the highly respected Dadu Anduhar is nothing you can just shoo away or stop at. He has also conquered six other Filipinos, one of whom is now permanently disabled on account of the vicious punishment he gave him. I'm referring to Joseph Cacararan, whom he beat late last year, and who came back home to Manila in a wheelchair. Round 12 will be off the ground in just 60 seconds. the ground you know a lot of people figure it's a miracle by itself that a fight has lasted this long after that first round knockdown nobody gave the korean so much as a chance to survive another round but game as they come the korean stayed in an upright position up to this point and this is round 12. normally In WBC and WBA championship fights, this would be the last round, but not with the IBA or not, uh, well, the IBF, which has elected to stick with 15 rounds as the stipulated distance for its championship bouts. And this is what you call championship territory. Both fighters seem to be superbly conditioned for this fight. Paul, in particular, I know, has fought more than 100 rounds in preparation for this assignment. He knows that the Korean is tough as most Korean fighters are. Bohol bouncing up and down on his toes, continually circling the left flank of his opponent in an attempt to avoid it. But a lot of people figure is the deadly right hand of the Korean. Now the Korean is show voting, practically inviting Bohol to come in. All of a sudden, he's fantasizing that he is Muhammad Ali. I don't see how he can afford to hot dog when he is definitely losing on points by the proverbial mile. Oh, we're getting into some dangerous situations of headbutting here. hand thrown by the Korean. Well, despite his being so far behind in my unofficial scorecard, don't count out the Korean yet because he has shown his capability for throwing what could be a haymaker of a right hand. And that's the beauty of boxing. You can trail behind by as much as 20 points, but you can turn the fight completely around in your favor with just a single punch, lucky or not. In the meantime, he's still playing his cards very smartly. The Korean suddenly backed away, complaining about an alleged headbutt. Well, Park has been given to a lot of theatricals. The referee did not fight, however. Ferocious Korean trying to fight gamely back as the bell sounds the end of round 
down 13. And the game challenger from Korea, Cho Won Park, has survived 12 rounds of vicious punishment. And now he's trying to deal out some of his own. Starting out very strongly with a body attack. He figures to wear down Rolando Bohol with body shots. But it might be too late in the game for him to go to the body. A body attack is normally a long-term investment. He should go ahead hunting at this point. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. He's trading leather for leather now with Bohol. The Korean is beginning to get a little bit more accurate, but Bohol cooperates him again with a right and left combination, but he retaliates with a right of his own, and his nose is bleeding once again. Once again, the Korean hot-dogging by lowering his guard. My guess is... He's simply trying to camouflage the fact that those gloves, which are eight-ounce gloves, are now a dead weight for his very weary arms. He is arm-weary, and now he's even showboating again. But Bohol is much too grizzled the veteran to fall for that kind of a trick. He knows that he's got the Korean number, and he's not taking any unnecessary chances. He keeps on piling points without opening himself up. Another combination by the Korean, a roundhouse left followed by a right. He misses again with a wild left hook. Bohol is not really mounting a very spirited attack, not the kind of attack that uh, would go for the kill, but simply enough to keep him on top. And he really is on top. As far as my scorecard is concerned, the Korean has yet to win a single round. And Bohol gets warned for attempted headbutting. So far, it's been a one-sided contest for the Filipino champion. Well, you've got to give the credit to the Korean for having been able to weather that kind of punishment and still stay in an upright position and still have the disposition to show both. Left and right combination by the Korean. Oh, he still parts the wallop in that right hand. I can tell from the way the right hand sucked in a lot of air as it went for its target, in vain. Well, Bohol is the one atop the ring, and he's the one on the receiving end of those punches being thrown by the Korean, although he really has dealt out a lot more of his own, so Bohol knows only too well what he is capable of taking. And if he is playing his cards very smartly, it could be that the Korean has hurt him. for the penultimate chapter of this 15-round marathon of a world championship fight. And it is a source of constant amazement to us that the Korean has been able to stay in a vertical position this long after suffering that first-round knockdown of the hands of Pujol. And now he's even showboating again, lowering his guard in Rocky Marciano fashion. Coming up with a whirling combination. Most of his punches, however, are coming from outside, in contrast to Bohol, who is a straight shooter. And this enables Bohol almost completely free access to his head and body. Well, this time... The Korean complained of an alleged low blow, and the referee believed him. And that's going to be a one-point deduction for Rolando Bohol. Well, there have been a few instances of headbutting in this contest. And, and here's the Korean. 
now he has illusions of being a Muhammad Ali. He could be throwing a red herring at a trail of Rolando Bohol, trying to lull Bohol into a false sense of security. But make no mistake about it, don't count him out yet because he still has the power to put away an opponent. Even somebody as sturdy as Rolando Bohol. That right hand of his is particularly deadly. Well, that one point deduction will not really affect uh, Bohol's domination of this fight. As far as yours truly is concerned, he has bagged practically all the rounds so far in this contest. And nothing less than a knockout can possibly save the day for the Korean. This is the 14th. The penultimate chapter. Probing left to the body by the Korean, trying to set up Bohol for a right hand to the chin, but Bohol won't fight it. Bohol's defenses have been known to raise their sharp protection for this fight. He has taken very little punishment to the face. Once again, the Korean's nose is bleeding. That nose has been so badly battered by the left hand of Boho that it might need to be examined by a doctor right after this fight. More body shots by the Korean. But it's a little too late in the game to go for the body. If he's looking to pull this fight out of the fire, he should go for the knockout. And you score a knockout by going to the chin. for a third is mastery over the Korean long after the bell is sounded we shall be ready for the 15th and final in this fight. Only three more minutes within which the Korean will have to summon every ounce of strength left in his body to pull up a knockout. Otherwise, he can just kiss this fight goodbye. He is so far behind the points that nothing less than a knockout could possibly take the crown away from the head of Rolando Bohol. And Bohol is not taking any chances. Looks like he has abandoned his quest for a knockout. He is simply boxing the night away, piling up enough points to make it a very convincing victory. He is already on his way to a successful title defense of the W, rather IBF, flyweight crown. I think the wall is also bleeding from the ear. And in contrast to his initial meeting with Chang Ho Choi last January 16, now it is the Korean who is forced to clinch for dear life. But he is still throwing leather. And there's still two minutes to go in the fight. He will have to come up with that 10 megaton bomb right here and now. Otherwise, he'll have to wait for another opportunity and fall right back in line for another crack at the title. On his part, Rolando Bohol seems to be successfully on his way to proving himself to be a worthy champion. But then again, in boxing, it's never over until it's over. Wild combination by Bohol. The Korean clearly tuckered out. And his gas tank is practically empty as he ate up another vicious right hook from Bohol, followed up by another flurry. Bohol coming up with a big finishing kick. Looking very good, smelling very good. And he might be already looking forward to his second defense of the title. The Korean has really fallen short of the expectations of the 20,000 white fans here at the Arneda Coliseum. He was billed as a conqueror of Filipinos, and that is clearly borne out by his record. But tonight, he has just been overwhelmed clearly by Rolando Bohol. The fall you saw earlier was clearly no knockdown. He was simply wrestled to the ground by Rolando. Again, a head collision. Here's 